In this video, we're going to talk about how to get the data out of or the structure that you loaded in. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find out what the name of the fields are in the, in the structure that you loaded in. So to do that, we're going to use the command field names. So I'm going to define F here as field names of data. And uh, down, down here, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and run the code so that we have the variables in here so that we can see things at the command prompt. So now, uh, if you look over here, you see that F is field names of data. Uh, we'll copy and paste that down to the command line and get rid of that so that you can the semicolon so you can see what's in there. You can see that that gives us a one by one cell array of slow walking. This tells us the names of all the fields that are inside our structured array. So now we want to take that and we want to define that as some variable that I'm going to call vec here. And we're going to define vec as data, the structure that we loaded our data into, dot f curly brace, because this is a cell array. We see that right here. It's a cell array. So curly brace and the name of our data is always going to be the first thing in this because there's only one thing in that cell array. So now I'm going to define vec as data dot f1 curly braces uh, and oh, non-existent fields. So uh, I'm going to put parentheses around this. And now that just tells it that f is not the field, that it's some variable field. That's why you need the parentheses. And now you can see that vec is the structure with fields. So now we could do something like vec dot force here, which tells us all the stuff inside that. And here's the data, the force data that we actually want to extract out. So if we do vec of force dot force, now we get a bunch of numbers, which is what we what we want. So up here in our code, now that we've walked through these things in the command window, up here in our code, we can take these lines that we've done. So vec is data dot f1. So f is the field names of the data up here in the command window. Vec is data dot parentheses f curly brace one. Close the parentheses, curly braces in the parentheses. And then the forces, okay, so I'm going to call that f force all is vec dot force dot force to get the forces. Now if we run this, we'll try putting a plot in here, force all. If we run that, clears everything, closes the command window, My computer's running on parallel, MATLAB on parallel, so it's a little bit slow sometimes, especially at popping up the plot windows, the figures. And you can see that it took our 5,000 points and plotted three points for 5,000 points instead of uh, three lines of 5,000 points each, but that's a problem that we can fix. We can do something with that. Now, MATLAB is going to go through this loop every time we want to do something. So let's say we wanted the force in the z direction. So instead of that, I'm going to say the force in the z direction uh, of all of the things, comma, i here. Uh, actually, I'm going to make this a cell array. So force z. So I'm going to say force z is equal to vec dot force dot force uh, the third one. So our force over here, force all, is a 3 by 5,000 array. So I'm going to take the third one, that's the z, and all of the points there and make that a vector there. And then force z, plot force z, and then we'll go ahead and run this again. This time we should get plot with just the z forces along the axis. And now you can do things with time. You can see the butterfly pattern. We're not actually interested in the first kind of 4,000 data points here. So you could actually, in terms of plotting this, trim that off and just um, use the parts that's interesting there. Now, 
if I want to save this to do something with afterwards, I can do that by making force z a variable where I store all of my z values. So my z is 1 by 5,000, so one uh, row and 5,000 columns across. I like storing my data in columns and rows for each data, so I'm going to use the transpose command, which will make force z. Show you what that does down here. Okay, down here, force z with the transpose there. And that changes the dimension over here. It's now 5,000 by 1 instead of 1 by 5,000. And then here in force z, I'm going to store uh, everything in the all of the vertical spaces, and I'm going to store it in my loop number here. And now I get this yellow underline here that says the variable force z appears to change size on every loop iteration because I've got that i, so it's going to grow 1, 1, 1, or 1, 2, 3. Um, so consider pre-allocating for speed. So up here we're going to pre-allocate force z underscore z is equal to, uh, I'm going to call it zeros of size or of uh, 5,000, I'm just going to go ahead and use the numbers I have. Um, there's ways to get this, but right now 5,000 by 2 or times by num l, uh, num l of file names, just like we're doing in the loop. And so now I've pre-allocated force z to do, to do that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and comment out the plot force z here, and actually I'm going to put plot force z down here instead, outside the loop, and let's go ahead and run the code again. Pay attention, oh, unable to perform the assignment, oh, because we've got a mismatch. So this is the, this is the problem. So I'm going to make this a cell array that's two by the number of elements that I have. And I'm just going to double check here that that works. Yep, so that makes it a cell array. Fz becomes a 2 by 2 cell. Uh, actually, so I want a num l cell. Num l cell there. Uh, and now it's going to, now we're going to have to change some things in here. So what we want is a cell array with one row and the number of elements in our uh, file names matrix F for columns. So I'm going to do cell one comma number of elements. And then down here in our loop where we're saving force Z, we don't want to save all of the elements in the row anymore. We want to just save to row one. And because this is a cell array, we need to change from the smooth braces to the curly braces to run this. And then when we do that, we should get everything has gone smoothly. Uh, we'll get force z which is a 1 by 2 cell and now we can plot our, we're going to make a figure and we'll plot force underscore z of element 1 and we get a figure looks like this and then we can turn hold on if we just plot another one it'll erase that and uh, go again. So I'm going to put hold on and now I can plot force underscore z of curly braces the stuff in two and oh I didn't spell force z correctly so I'll try this again force z and now we should be able to go find our plot back here figure one and you can see that we've got both of these things on there now if we had trimmed everything to be the same size we could put them on the, we could overlay plots, we could start at the same point. Um, ideally, you should line up the start times on those two figures, on those two um, plots so that they kind of line up together. You'll be normalizing the body weight, the force to body weight over here. We haven't put any units on any of our labels. These are not beautiful figures, uh, but this is just to show you kind of how you can do things. Uh, hopefully this part right here gives you a clue of how you might do this inside the loop. Um, I'm going to define the figure out here. I'm going to open the figure out here. And then in here, inside the loop, I can plot 
my force of iteration i, and I'm going to turn hold on out here too. I don't need to turn hold on every time. And then it will close our plot because it closes everything clear all, close all, CLC, and we get a plot where it does both of those things in the same, same thing. So there you go. There's how to do some data uh, in MATLAB, how to manipulate and store things in loops to, to save things from one iteration to another, how to get your data out of the variables. Bring your questions to class. I'll see you there.